Hello fellow humans, this is Adam, I hope that you are doing well and I am going to share my thoughts and my review since I had this unit for about two weeks right now. What you are looking at is the Midnight Color M4 MacBook Air 13 inch, the base model with 256 gigabyte of storage, 8 core GPU, and then 10 core CPU. And I have dabbled with a blender and we did a lot of blender testing. I have dabbled with my main software of choice and that would be Maya. I have dabbled with Zebra. I have not doubled with Houdini, but I did work with it for Unreal Engine as well. I can go into Geekbench scores and all that fun stuff, but I don't do it. I would like to have a more practical approach for what I am doing. And with that practical approach, I did open the machine and I did open Maya and I started working on a project and I finished the project no issues. I did open a Blender and I did many renders with a Blender for the sake of testing and for the sake of knowledge and none of them crashed and all of them worked. As a matter of fact, one of the tests that I did, it did a crash on a 3070 Ti with 64 gigabyte of RAM and 8 terabyte of storage with Intel Core i9 12th gen 12900 H and that laptop is a Razer Blade 15 with an OLED display. I was doing one of the tests and the, <laughs> and the Windows machine actually crashed while doing that with Unreal Engine but the MacBook Air did not and the MacBook Air has only 16 gigabyte of RAM and it's shared memory or as Apple like to call it unified memory even though I do not like that term. And this machine costs only $1,000 and if you are a student in the US at least you can get it for $900. Which me as a student I end up getting this machine for $900. My idea was I am going to get this laptop and I will return it after I am done with it because I just want to test it. My main machine, the machine that I use on a daily basis is an M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro with 64 gigabyte of RAM, 8 terabyte of storage and then the 32 core GPU with the 10 core CPU. With a lot of the testing that I did, this machine did beat my main machine that I got in 2021 that cost almost a price of a car. So in terms of the machine, the M4 MacBook Air, it did show nothing better promise and I'm just gonna do a quick render for uh, the junk shop using a blender and the score that I consistently got from the M4 MacBook Air did beat my M1 Max and did beat the 3070 Ti and it showed a lot of a promise and that goes to show you that the engineers at Apple when they were working at the SOC by the way if you are combining the RAM and then the storage and as well as the CPU or the processing unit it's called SOC and allow me to be a little bit technical and explain what an SOC is. SOC usually means system on a chip and that's why sometimes maybe people need to call it SOAC but SOC system on a chip and then you call it a day. Now in terms of why we call it system on a chip that is because the integrated circuits inside the CPU is being combined and it has multiple components within it and that's usually include the CPU, a GPU, memory and other components as well and all of that would be functioning into a one singular chip rather than using separate component let's say for example you have a motherboard and then that motherboard you put the CPU on it and then with the CPU you need to put a RAM and then that RAM needs to be in a 2D channel or a 4D channel is that what they call it 2D channel I think yeah something like that where oh so, sorry I'm thinking of 2D arrays they need to be in a dual channel and then when you put them in a dual channel you need to go and put your hard drive in which needs to be an NVMe SSD or maybe a normal SSD or maybe it would be a mechanical hard drive which I really hope you're not using a mechanical hard drive by 2025 but again people are different and they have different needs so maybe it would work for you but that's beside the point. All of that would be within a system on a chip or as we like to call it an SOC. The beautiful thing about an SOC you can optimize for it because Apple when they made 
for example the stuff that they made for the laptop and they had different variations the variations they had four variations you have the ultra you have the max you have the pro and then you have the base model which means four variations and in terms of a blender the apple paid a blender money by having a partnership with them and i am sure a blender used some of that money not only to develop their software but also to optimize for those four variants of the soc and that's basic computer architecture at least in terms of chip manufacturing and when you have a fabrication lab you have companies like tcmc micron and the likes of them who usually make stuff like that so having a machine like that and everything is being optimized for it means the machine would be really powerful and that's what we saw with this machine right here if from a 3d modeler perspective when i used maya i did not have any issues with maya and i managed to finish a couple of projects using maya no issues at all in terms of unreal engine i managed to get a project done with unreal engine but i do not recommend using the m4 for unreal engine at all i would say go with a windows machine and i think that has to do with epic and apple and their relationship is not the best so basically the optimization is not the best for the max just yet so basically if you are solely using unreal engine i would say go the windows route which a lot of you fellow humans really like and seems everyone is fascinated with a blender a blender for the m4 base model is a wonderful thing and you will not have any issues with it and in terms of ZBrush, I did use ZBrush and I made this pod, which is actually inspired by, I think it's called the Mobis Model 2008, the Space uh, Odyssey EVA pod. This was actually inspired by it. And I did use this machine right here with the Huion tablet, which I will definitely be talking about in videos in the future through zbrush to make it and this machine did not even sweat in the process of making that so as a 3d modeler taking unreal engine aside if you get this machine you will be very happy the only thing that i would say that you need to change is get more storage and with more storage you get a couple of gpu cores which will help you with rendering and such anyway that is number one. Number two, let's go to the side of being a developer or a game developer or a computer scientist when you are working with code and such. Now, in terms of running code, unless you are using Python and you are doing large uh, models in relation to artificial intelligence and machine learning, which I do not deal with at all because I am not a fan of, and that's more of a personal approach just because I do think AI is being used for the wrong reasons currently as it steals from artists and game developers and I am against that so I do not deal with it for that reason. However, that aside, this machine is capable of running those large language models. You would not have an issue running them if that is something that you are interested in. In. But let's talk about low level programming a little bit and let's talk about languages such as C or C sharp or even assembly if you are into that. Running them through this machine, you will have no issues. And on top of that, since Mac OS is a Unix based system anyway, you have access to the terminal right away. So you so you can do all your crazy stuff in terms of pushing to GitHub and then pulling it from GitHub, or if you want to run a simulation using your terminal, or even if you want to do your ls and your touch and your mac dictionary or whatever all of that you can do it because this is a unix based system meaning all of the functionality that you have with linux you do have it here on mac os and that by nature is really good when you are trying to be a developer or a programmer or a computer scientist in a general sense just because you have access to those tools and they are built in and you don't have to use anything external to get them running. And so far I have finished a few of my school labs on this machine and for me I do not like to use IDEs, I like to use text editors because I think text editors are faster and also they get out of the way when you are trying to code something. So instead of it giving you suggestions every, every few seconds and then showing you warnings all over the place, a text editor gets out of the way and you can code whatever you want to code. And for me, my text editor of choice, that would be Sublime Text. And I love Sublime Text for how versatile and flexible it is. And then at the same time, it's fast. And whether you end up using VS Code or IntelliJ, they work just fine on this machine as well.
So from the perspective of being a developer, this is more than enough for you. And maybe that is the only case where I would say maybe you don't even need to upgrade the storage. However, I still encourage you to upgrade the storage for the long term. But if you are a developer and you are only working with, you know, text and such, probably you can put everything on an external hard drive and you will be good to go. Because code is not as demanding as something graphical such as Maya or a Blender or ZBrush or Unreal Engine. However, that would not be true if you were a game developer, because if you were a game developer, you will deal with the side of the code and you will deal and you will deal with the graphical interface or the graphical elements of whatever you are making. Then in this case, it would be better to have at least 512 gigabytes. Not only the 512 gigabytes will give you an extra space for you to install your software that you actually want you want to work with, but it will actually give you an extra cores of GPU, which will help you a lot. By going back to the conversation around this machine my thoughts on it is nothing but positive and honestly Apple and the engineers who worked in order to create the M4 they did a wonderful job because having something only for $900 compete with something that only four years ago costed at least four thousand dollars is insane and i am talking about the m1 max here because if we want to talk about whether that's going to be ryzen 9 in terms of the laptops or whether that's going to be intel core i9 they cannot even come close to the base m4 in terms of the cpu performance not the gpu performance my overall thoughts are nothing but positive about this machine and i do recommend it for people who are interested in programming coding or game development or people who are interested in something such as as a 3d modeling and that would be blender maya zbrush and the likes of them and i even some of the people said in the comments houdini would be included in this and you will be good to go